Well, today we're talking about the glymphatic system, which is critical for brain and immune health. And I'm going to go through really what the glymphatic system is, how critical it is for our brain and our immune system. I'm also going to talk about ways it can get congested and what that can actually mean to our health and the best strategies really to optimize our glymphatic system and allow our brain to drain and detoxify itself. And so we know that the term glymphatic refers to your glial cells, which support, nourish, protect, and isolate your neurons and play an important role in your immune and glymphatic system. There's uh, astroglial cells, which are a type of glial cells that are particularly important within your glymphatic system. They have receptors called aquaporin-4 channels that help the movement of cerebrospinal fluid, also called CSF. And that's a clear fluid that's essential for both immunological and mechanical protection around your central nervous system. Your glymphatic system runs parallel to your arteries and connects with your lymphatic system. So you have your glymphatic system in your brain and you have your lymphatic system outside of your brain. And they connect right by the thick membrane of connective tissue, providing coverage to your central nervous system. And that's called the dura. So you've got this dura, which is this thick insulating connective tissue around the neurons. And that is basically where the glymphatic system connects to the lymphatic system to help drain waste, metabolic waste from the brain out through the body. Your glymphatic system allows the efficient removal of soluble proteins and metabolites from your central nervous system with the help of a system of perivascular tunnels. Your glymphatic system also helps to brain-wide allocation of glucose. So it helps to you know, allocate where the brain needs glucose, amino acids, lipids, neuromodulators, and growth factors. And your glymphatic system mainly functions while you're asleep. That's a critical thing to notice, that sleeping is, cr is crucial for glymphatic system function. And this is really what, how you know, the brain is able to clean and heal itself. So we know that the brain cells want to undergo autophagy where they self-repair. They break down old damaged proteins and damaged uh, cellular organelles, and they repair them and form them into newer, healthier, more stress-resilient uh, cells, right? And cellular mitochondria, but they got to get rid of the waste. And the way they do that is through this glymphatic system. It's super critical. Now, this is one of the reasons why too little sleep is really bad for your body. We know that too little sleep increases your risk of colds, fevers, flus, causes digestive issues, trouble learning, irritability, and mood swings, depletes your sex drive, can affect your vision, definitely affects your cravings and your weight, and can, link, can be linked to headaches and migraines. So we all have known that. We, we've experienced poor sleep, and what happens with that one of the main reasons is because of this poor glymphatic flow. And this is also one of the reasons why sleeping, sitting up, for example, let's say you are sleeping on a plane, sitting up is never going to be as good as sleeping lying down. When your legs are, slight, are, are either parallel with your head or slightly higher, slightly inclined, you actually get better glymphatic flow and you're able to drain and detoxify your brain more effectively. And if you don't do that, over time, you develop brain degeneration. We know that the brain tissue is very susceptible to chronic inflammation. And over time, chronic inflammation will destroy your neuronal tissue and leave your brain weak and impaired. It will actually cause shrinkage of your cerebral cortex, it will cause shrinkage of your hippocampus campus where you store memories. And so when they look at, you know, in autopsies, uh, people with dementia or Alzheimer's disease, as compared to somebody who didn't, they see significant atrophy in the brain tissue. So really critical to remember that. And again, we know that removing waste from your central nervous system is critical for your brain and body's homeostasis. And that's particularly important as you're aging, because as you age, your glymphatic system starts to become a little bit more sluggish, especially when you have chronic inflammation. According to a 2014 study published in the Annals of Neurology, the impairment of the glymphatic system due to aging. Of course, that's what they say in the study, but of course, you know, 
these people typically have inflammation in the brain, but you know, due to aging may cause the clearance of interstitial amyloid beta, right? And so we know these amyloid plaques are linked with Alzheimer's disease, for example. And so when there's higher levels of amyloid beta plaque, because it's not being drained, this is a protein that's not being drained through the lymphatic system that makes the aging brain more vulnerable to neurodegenerative disease. According to a 2020 study published in Nature Reviews Neurology, the clearance of the lymphatic system decreases with aging and increases the risk of neurodegeneration due to the accumulation of toxic proteins such as the amyloid plaque, amyloid beta plaque. So we know that it's clear that the removal of metabolic waste and toxins may contribute to dementia and other neuro neurodegenerative conditions like Parkinson's, for example, as well, and Alzheimer's. However, the function of the lymphatic system declines with aging, and that opens the door to the development of neurodegenerative disease later in life. And we also know that impairment of your lymphatic system may contribute to strokes, cortical spreading depression, so different types of depression, traumatic brain injury, and other brain health issues. So when you have a traumatic brain injury, the lymphatic system has a lot of work to do, right? Because there's a lot of metabolic waste, but research has shown that it actually slows down. It's not able to function as well. Uh, and you're not able to drain the brain and heal as quickly. And so these are strategies that we can do. And, you know, there are a lot of different things that you can do. And um, obviously reasons for lymphatic system congestion, the main reasons are going to be chronic inflammation, blood sugar dysregulation. So having poor blood sugar balance, poor sleep quality, chronic stress, environmental toxins, and also biotoxin illness. And so we know with blood sugar stability, this is super critical when our, when we eat food, our blood sugar goes up and our insulin follows. For some individuals, they overshoot their insulin and that pulls their blood sugar down into a hypoglycemic range. And that's where they feel hangry, irritable. They feel um, like they've got a headache. They've got cravings. They, uh, they start to shiver. You know, they, they oftentimes feel really dizzy and weak. That is a sign that there is metabolic damage to the brain. And when we continue to do that, we break down the glial cells, we cause dysfunction there, and we cause dysfunction in the entire lymphatic system. And so, and cause more inflammation in the brain. So we got to keep our blood sugar stable throughout the day. That's so critical here. Now, another big thing is EMFs. So EMF exposure. So if we are being exposed to Wi-Fi and 5G, and you know we've got our 5G phone that we're putting up near our head on a regular basis, this is going to cause dysfunction in the glial cells in the lymphatic system. So we have normal native EMF that comes from sunlight, the earth, around trees. We want to be exposed to that, the EMFs coming from nature, but we want to limit our exposure to EMFs that are coming from man-made or artificial devices. So televisions, computers, cell phones, right? All those types of things that is going to cause a form of EMF that stresses our lymphatic system, stresses our brain. It's going to disrupt good quality sleep and it's going to just disrupt the lymphatic flow. So turn the Wi-Fi off in your home before you go to bed. That's super critical here. You know, we know 5G in general uh, is going to cause problems in our body, throughout our body, but certainly it reduces our melatonin production. Melatonin, getting a good amount of melatonin is critical for driving lymphatic system flow. And so reducing uh, 5G exposure is really critical. Now, action steps to improve lymphatic flow, prioritize good sleep, right? So critical, anti-inflammatory nutrition plan. We're going to talk about these things. Intermittent fasting is, is very powerful for helping balance your blood sugar, which will help bring down inflammation in the brain and support lymphatic flow. Regular movement and exercise, just like our lymphatic system, we need good movement and exercise to have good lymphatic flow. We want to reduce stress, practice gratitude and meditation. That will help to drive better lymphatic flow. So the more at ease and at peace our brain is, particularly while we're sleeping, the better our lymphatic system is going to function. 
chiropractic care, massage therapy. So these kind of body work therapies, acupuncture also can be very helpful for glymphatic flow. In fact, a lot of people will say, man, I slept so much better after I saw the chiropractor or I got that massage and I slept so good for a week or I went to the acupuncturist and they, and I overcame my insomnia. Why is that? Because these body therapies help to reduce stress, bring homeostasis back to the body, balance out the nervous system and allow the lymphatic system to function and flow effectively. And then consuming things like omega-3 fatty mm -hmm. acids, and things to help detoxify from biotoxin illness. I didn't explain that earlier, but biotoxin illness is things like molds. Um, it's things like uh, viral infections, Epstein-Barr infection, Lyme disease, um, bacterial infections, let's say H. pylori, things like that, where we're releasing a lot of toxic compounds, parasites, we're releasing lots of toxic compounds into our system driving up inflammation in our brain, and that's going to disrupt lymphatic flow. So bioactive carbons like fulvic and humic acids are really great. Zeolites, these are great for helping bind and pull these toxins out of our system. We can also use specific herbs that help support our lymphatic system. Things like burdock, for example, sheep sorrel uh, is another good one. Astragalus, these are all good herbs that help move uh, lymphatic flow. And then considering red light therapy as well can also be very helpful for lymphatic flow. So we know getting a really good melatonin release at night is critical for our entire body for keeping inflammation under control, reducing oxidative stress, but very important for lymphatic uh, function and moving the cerebral spinal fluid. And so the way to, to maximize melatonin secretion is getting a lot of good daytime sunlight, believe it or not, even though that inhibits melatonin, it's almost like cocking a slinky. We want to inhibit it uh, during the day. That will give you a lot of wakefulness during the day, but it will also cause like a buildup of the melatonin in a sense. Like the body will, will be priming a really great melatonin release at night if we do that. And then at night, we want to reduce and really stop exposure to light. Uh, you know, make our room as dark as possible. Um, you know, maybe a few hours before bed, we want to wear blue light blocking glasses, dim our lights, have kind of orange uh, color lights that are more mimicking fire or candlelight, which is what our ancestors would have had. And that's less blunting on your melatonin release. So after dark, you want to do that. And then, you know, when you're going to sleep, wear an eye mask, or you know, be in an environment that's as dark as possible so you get the maximal amount of melatonin release. So daytime light exposure, particularly early in the day, um, and then at night, making sure that you know, after dark, you're in a room that's fairly dark. It's dim, the lights are not bright. The lights that are on are more of an orangey hue rather than kind of a whitish or bluish hue. Um, and then when you go to sleep, making sure that you have got an eye mask on, the room is as dark as possible. That will help release melatonin, which is going to support your glymphatic system. It's going to protect your neural tissue from oxidative stress, allow your brain to drain. It's going to help regulate the gut microbiome as well and improve your overall immune system and your inflammation process. So critical, getting that good melatonin release. Now, some other key tips for a great night's sleep have your room as cool as you can, right? As cool, but comfortable as possible. So having your room cool really helps with deep sleep, particularly, okay? So deep sleep, you kind of need your body in a certain cool environment. That will help, um, again, keep your room as dark as possible. Avoid caffeine within eight hours of sleeping. So don't drink caffeine late in the evening. That will disrupt your sleep and your glymphatic your glymphatic flow. Don't eat within three hours of sleeping. A lot of people are eating right before they go to bed. That is a huge disruptor of glymphatic flow. So don't eat right before you go to bed. Make sure again, you're getting good sun exposure during the day. You're exercising regularly, but not late at night. So again, not, I wouldn't do it within four hours of going to bed. So if you're going to bed at 10, I wouldn't exercise after 6 PM, at least not intensely. Um, you know, you might play with your kids or something, but not so, any sort of intense uh, strength training or high intensity interval training. 
that's not a good idea. You can go out for a walk. That's great. Uh, light movement, but not high intensity exercise. Again, avoid bright light after sunset, super key. So I like to wear blue light blocking glasses when, when it gets dark um, at night. And then you want to wind down after 9 p.m. So you should not have goals after 9 p.m. If you have goals, you're going to release more dopamine, more cortisol. You're going to blunt your melatonin release. You're not going to get as good a quality sleep. One other critical thing is nasal breathing. So breathing through your nose, particularly at night, has been shown to help support glymphatic flow. So as opposed to mouth breathing, which can actually cause a lot of different problems, but it's also associated with more of your sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight system, doesn't allow you to get the deepest, best quality sleep. Nasal breathing really does. And so what we want to do is we want to train our body to primarily breathe from our nose. So one thing that will help is mouth taping, where we take some tape, and we put it over our mouth. When we do that, Obviously, we can't now breathe out of our mouth. So it forces our brain and our body to coordinate to breathe more effectively out of the nose. And that supports increased nasal nitric oxide levels. When we have better nasal nitric oxide levels. It allows for better circulation in the brain. And that improves better, uh, you know, glymphatic flow and lymphatic drainage in the body. It also increases whole blood oxygen by 15% breathing out of your nose. So very, very powerful for your brain, your body. It actually produces, or, or I should say improves oral health. You know, how you wake up with dry mouth in the morning, you'll have less of that and it will not create as good an environment for pathogenic species of bacteria and microorganisms to grow and develop in your mouth, around your teeth and your tongue. So very helpful there. And that increased oxygen and better glymphatic flow will support better mental and emotional health. So I like to put some tape over my mouth, mouth taping at night to force my body, my brain to breathe out of my nose. And when you do that, you also train yourself to breathe more out of your nose throughout the day. So it's a very simple hack that can really improve your glymphatic flow and your ability to, to drain and detoxify your brain. Now, for blood sugar stability, of course, the best foods are going to be your grass-fed, wild-caught animal products, which are loaded with nutrients, including healthy fats and healthy protein, um, things like avocados, avocado oil, olives, olive oil, all those healthy fats are super key for blood sugar stability. I always recommend prioritizing good protein and healthy fats in your meal, and then um, complementing that with antioxidants coming from non-starchy veggies, maybe berries or different types of fruit, okay, and herbs, things like ginger, garlic, onions, chives, basil, oregano, thyme, rosemary, sage, turmeric, uh, ginger, right? Things like that, all great for the body. Apple cider vinegar, another great thing to include in there, but your foundation should really be healthy, grass-fed, organic animal products or wild-caught fish and healthy fats, you know? And so that could be grass-fed butter, coconut oil, um, extra virgin olive oil, avocados, right? Things like that, all great. You can always complement, you know, your diet with something like green tea, dandelion tea, right? I mean, there's a whole bunch of different herbal teas that are really beneficial for your body. So we wanna be consuming those. And we wanna avoid, of course, any sort of refined grains, whole grains, you know, really all grains. We want to we want to avoid fried and deeply processed foods, uh, and we want to avoid your grain-fed animal products as much as possible. Your your conventionally raised products, and your commercial um, you know uh, uh, vegetable oils, soybean oil, corn oil, sa safflower oil, cottonseed oil, peanut oil, sesame oil. And where do we find these things in salad dressings as well as you know most processed foods? We avoid all of those pro-inflammatory foods. We want to make sure we're getting a lot of good movement. Okay. So walking throughout the day is great for your lymphatic system in general, and also great for your brain and it enhances tissue oxygenation, helps balance key brain neurotransmitters. Most people notice they have a reduced stress and tension in their body when they're moving on a regular basis. They have a uh, better mood, more happiness, more joy, and they have better mental clarity and memory. So make sure you're getting out, you're moving and then also doing some sort of high intensity exercise as well. So walking is movement. Anything you're doing where you can have a conversation, 
I consider movement and movement is very therapeutic. However, we also need short bouts of high intensity exercise where we're working at a pace where we can't have a conversation. We're not able to because we need more oxygen. And that could be running sprints or doing some sort of high intensity interval training. Could also be strength training. I'm a huge advocate of strength or resistance training. I think it's so important to be working on your, your, your muscularity, right? Your, um, it's so important to be building lean body tissue. That's so critical, especially as you age, great for your brain, but great for your entire body, your heart, your immune system, everything, your ability to do the things that you want to do. I mean, everything gets impacted by your muscle tissue. So as we age, we tend to go through, um, you know, periods where we're losing muscle. Okay. And, um, you know, it's super critical that we're doing strength training so we can keep that muscle. And so it's so important. So again, chiropractic care, okay, or some sort of body therapy. So it could be chiropractic. Many people see great results with chiropractic care, particularly when it comes to sleep and brain function, having more mental clarity, um, getting pressure off your spine and nervous system will help with pumping your cerebral spinal fluid and activating your lymphatic system. So chiropractic is huge for that. Really great for that massage. A lot of people see really good results with massage as well as acupuncture for helping support lymphatic flow. And then red light therapy. So, you know, this is something I do, especially in the wintertime, um, where red light is a form of infrared light that's, or a form of light, I should say, that comes from the sun, like your morning sunrise, your evening sunset, you'll see the red light, where you can actually get a red light therapy device. And you can actually be exposed to this. I like the Mito Red, which if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put a link under in the show notes um, so you can check that out. But red light has been shown to help stimulate mitochondrial health, improve circadian rhythm and sleep, um, helps promote wound healing and tissue repair, really great for skin and inflammatory conditions. And it's great for, you know, the brain and for setting the circadian rhythm and helping improve sleep and lymphatic flow. So I like looking at my red light therapy device, although, you know, I tend to keep my eyes closed, just, you know, the red light kind of penetrates your eyes, even when they're closed. And uh, again, great for circadian rhythm and brain function. Now, some supplements that can be really helpful, omega-3 fatty acids. Now you can get these from consuming um, wild-caught fish, wild-caught seafood, um, we'll, we'll definitely help with this. <clears throat> and then things like, um, <clears throat> like algae, like spirulina, chlorella, <clears throat> we'll have some of this grass fed meats, but also supplementing with like a long chain, uh, omega-3 supplement, like a fish oil, a purified fish oil that's rich in EPA and DHA can be really, really great for brain function and lymphatic flow and, and just your brain's ability to detoxify itself. DHA which is the longest chain omega-3 has been shown to be the most beneficial overall for brain cognitive function. Um, and so that's really the main one that you're looking to get. And then bioactive carbons. What are these? Fulvic acids, humic acids, zeolite. Okay. We have several that we sell on our online store. Um, bioactive carbon biotox, for example, bioactive carbon metchem um, that have these compounds that help to detoxify. So fulvic and humic acids come from the, the soil, deep within the soil. And they're part of a communication process between the soil and the plant. And so we know that soil, this is, this is good to remember, dirt is kind of a leftover byproduct um, that is more or less like um, you know metabolic waste, whereas soil is alive, right? So soil is really living. And part of the life cycle of soil is these fulvic and humic acids, which are a communication process with the plant um, that's growing above them. And so these compounds bring minerals, they pull toxins out of the plant, they bring minerals to the plant, for example. And when we are consuming them, they do the same for us. They help deliver minerals into our cells, they help pull toxins from our body, and they're also... Um, great for our immune system, help kill off bad bacteria, viruses, um, fungal products, parasites, things like that. So they can help reduce all of those things. 
and support our overall body and help us detoxify. And so um, I love using these and they really help detoxify. And the glymphatic system is really part of our body's detoxification system. It's part of our lymphatic system. So complementing it with something like bioactive carbons, um, fulvic humic acid, zeolites, uh, bentonite clay even, you know, can all be very, very helpful here. And then my top product for deep sleep is our magnesium sleep. We know magnesium is super critical in general for good sleep. And most people are deficient in magnesium. Over, Magnesium plays a role in over 300 enzymatic functions in the body. And part of that is sleep, right? It helps regulate the balance of glutamate to GABA in our brain. So glutamate, if we have too much glutamate, we have too much excitatory activity. And so GABA is like the brakes on the brain. And so magnesium really helps regulate that balance. Magnesium is also really critical for um, serotonin, melatonin production. So we get that deep sleep. It helps relax our muscles. It helps calm and relieve stress in the brain. So super critical. And the mag sleep also has things like lavender in there and um, passion flower and some different herbs that help support deep sleep, right? So it's a combination of highly absorbable magnesium and relaxing adapt adaptogens, right? Again, which help help you fall asleep, supports deep sleep and duration, helps relax your body, helps support cardiovascular function. So really like the mag sleep for helping support glymphatic function. So hopefully guys, uh, this has been a great training for you. Hopefully you've learned a lot and we will see you guys on a future online training. Be blessed everybody.